Oh, God is good. Turn to Revelation 12. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12. Is everybody there? Can you all hear me? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Revelation 12 is the ultimate scripture, the chapter that kind of like tells it all. Unplug that thing. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. Revelation 12 is the scripture that kind of tells it all. It's phenomenal. And if you can get deep into the scripture, you'll find that the scripture is so multi-level and multi-dimensional. It speaks not only of past, present, and future, <clears throat> but it speaks about in the same thing of people, places, things, and other dimensions. And in this, in this scripture, which we're going to begin to read here, you're going to see things come alive in the message that God is bringing. This is one associated with the constellations. We have 12 constellations, and this is one of the, con this is a, a gathering of certain constellations that made an image at a certain time. In fact, this image that we're going to talk about, it was established on September 23rd of this year. And it went over Jerusalem, and it can only be seen from Jerusalem. <clears throat> See, people celebrate the birth of Christ, but December was actually his conception. He was birthed on Feast of Trumpets. But his conception was in December. Because the Hebrew celebrate conception as birth. Does everybody get it? The wise men didn't show up for two years later. What would Jesus know what to do with anything? A baby in the crib. So the wise men came two years later. And so in this, they brought preparations and they brought gold and so forth so that Jesus could be prepared the ones that showed up first in the arena were the shepherds. God spoke to shepherds first and shared what was going on. And then the star of Bethlehem showed up in the arena where Jesus would be. Bethlehem is associated, the word Beth is associated with bread. So in other words, Bethlehem was the place of, he was the bread of life. It was the house of bread because he who eats of him has life. <clears throat> and so now you and I are in the house of God. <laughs> it doesn't become the house of God until God's people come in and make it the house. Amen. Amen. Let's start with verse 1 here. <clears throat> it says, A great <clears throat> sign appeared in heaven, and a woman clothed with the sun and a moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor, in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. It says that his tail drew a third of the stars, which are known as angels, of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was getting ready to give birth to, to do what? Devour their child as soon as it was born. So we see something wild here, powerful, that we see a battle between the dragon and the child. Amen? The dragon is after the child. All right, in verse 5, it says, She bore the male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was what? Caught up. That was when Jesus died and rose from the dead, and then 40 days later, he ascended to heaven. Or 30 days later, he ascended to heaven. <clears throat> and her child was caught up. That was also associated with rapture. Caught up. Up to what? God and his throne. Now, I want you to understand that between uh, one, uh, and, and let's go to verse 6. Then a woman did what? Fled into the where? Wilderness. She did what? She fled. She what? Fled. That's associated with flying. She fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that she should feed her, that 
he, they should feed her there for 1,260 days, which is three and a half years. All right? Now, again, this is prophetic. It's a prophetic message. It's about what was past and what is present and what is future. We see here that, that this was a pre prelude uh, battle between all of uh, Satan's kingdom, the dragon, demonic forces, trying to kill this child. Because this child was carrying something special, who we call Jesus. There was a battle here. Amen? Amen? Now, this is kind of like what we call a prelude of what was going to happen in verses 1 through 6. And then from verses 7, it begins to explain more. It's a summary which begins to explain more of the event. And it says here, this is why all of this occurred. Why? Because war broke out in heaven. Be, why was war broke out in heaven? Because Lucifer, God's right-hand man, the first angel that was created, who was the praise and worship leader of the universe, rebelled against God and exalted himself. And God said, you, out. And Lucifer was in charge of a third of the angels. That's why a third of the stars was removed because Lucifer took them with them. This is not a story. This is reality. And it says, war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, and, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So again, Lucifer and his angels were removed. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the what? Whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now that's wild. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength of the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Who did they overcome? The powers of darkness. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having what? Great wrath. Because he knows that he has a what? A short time. A short time. Time. Now I want you to get this because now this is, was a summary of the battle of the dragon and his angels removed from the creator's presence to battle the woman. Amen? But understand now, the child is now in heaven. The child who became an adult and died. He's now where? In heaven at the right hand of God. So now the battle is with the woman. And who is the woman? The woman physically is Israel. Spiritually is the body of Christ. Because we are known as the bride of Christ. Let's go a little further. I'll repeat 13 again. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth and persecuted the woman who gave birth to the what? Male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. That she might what? Fly. Remember before it said that she fled. So this is kind of like the witness. Because the, the word backs the word. Now it's given more detail. So now we know that the woman was given two wings as of an eagle. That she might fly into the wilderness to her place. And where she is nourished for time and times and a half. Which means three and a half years from the presence of the serpent. That is me and you now. Remember, the child was caught up, raptured up, and next is going to be me and you that's going to be removed before the great wrath of the devil, which will be the great wrath of God. Because God uses the devil to bring his wrath. Has everybody got this? Okay. Now, this is what we call the seven-year tribulation. But see, but the first three and a half years of tribulation, it's, gonna, it's not going to be as crazy as you think it's going to be. It will start to get there. Things will be starting to get in order. There will be false prosperity. There will be all kinds of things. There's going to be a preparation of one world order, one world economy, one world religion. All of that is in place right now. In fact, they're getting ready to build the second temple right now. Or 
or we might say the final temple in Jerusalem. That's why United States right now's embassy is moving to Jerusalem. Why? Because it's fulfilling prophecy. We are close. And what is the prophecy for? Because it's the two wings is United States and Israel. The two wings also, the rapture, because when Jesus transfigured in front of the disciples, Moses and Elijah showed up. See, Moses' body was buried by God and then came up. And an angel came and took him home. Elijah was raptured up, taken alive. See, so the two wings is a representation of Moses and Elijah also. Because it's associated with the rapture of the church that will be removed. That's why the next feast to be fulfilled is called the Feast of Trumpets, which is also associated with the birth of Christ. But in the Feast of Trumpets, it says that the body of Christ will be removed from the earth, fulfilling that scripture. Is everybody okay? That's the next feast to be fulfilled. So right now, you got to understand that they're trying to work out a seven-year treaty, a peace treaty in the Middle East. Why? Because once that treaty is signed, you and I have three and a half years left. Don't forget this. Don't lose it. Don't let it be taken from you. Is everybody okay? Woohoo! Glory. <laughs> so we see here now, let's go a little further. In verse 15, we'll finish it up here. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was what? Enraged with the woman. Why? Because he couldn't get her now. She was rescued. God raptured her off the earth, off the planet. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments, which is associated with the Jews, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, they're going to have a testimony of Jesus Christ after many of these backslidden believers that are out there to say that they know Jesus and they're not doing the right things, they're going to be left behind. Now they'll have the testimony of Jesus Christ because they're going to know, whoa, I missed the bus out of here. There's going to be many people who say they know Jesus that'll be left behind. Many. Thousands. Millions. Millions. Because they really don't know him. They don't really know him. Because see, if you know him, you worship him. If you know him, you follow him. If you know him, you don't live for yourself no more. If you know him, you're totally different. You're no longer of this earth. And if you know him, your whole purpose in life now is to fulfill your mission and establish the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven and rescue many, as many souls as you can before you get out of here. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Now, help from God came with the power of his Christ I want to share something specifically important about this. Why was the dragon and the powers of going after the Christ? Why did they want to kill him? Because, of course, we know he wanted to prevent he was sent on a mission. But there was something vitally, vitally important. He carried something. The Christ carried something so important that it would change the world. It's called divine intelligence. Does everybody get it? He carries what? Divine intelligence. Oh. Why? To overcome the dragon's deception. Over the earth of the inhabitants who the humans have been taken captive by terrestrial intelligence and false celestial intelligence. God sent his mind in Christ Jesus, divine intelligence into the world to change everything. Oh, praise God. 
the woman, the body of Christ, was raptured. In other words, fly, taken up into heaven. And those left will have to fight. The conclusion is the dragon brings fake news, false celestial intelligence, and brings it to mankind. So he can stay and live in the state of deception. Amen? Amen. But Jesus comes to bring divine intelligence. So he can overcome. God's divine intelligence, who is creator, supersedes all other intelligence that there can be. All other. So we have a word. We have a, a Bible here that's associated with divine intelligence. Again, there's a difference. There's terrestrial intelligence, which is worldly. There's so celestial intelligence, which is heavenly sky and space. And then there's divine intelligence, which is eternal from the creator who created all things. That's different. It's a different intelligence. Of course, now you got AI, artificial intelligence. Which now I want to share something with you because AI and artificial intelligence will become the image of the beast. If you notice right now, things are changing. You've heard of cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is now getting ready to change everything. The technology is set up for the one world currency. In fact, the Federal Reserve is going to put out a coin called Fed coin. See, they will remove, they want to come to a society to where you can no longer handle cash anymore. So they have more control. All of this is falling into place right now. Even the Catholicism and Protestants have come together and hope to perform and get together all religions so there becomes one religion, which most likely out of the Catholicism, the false prophet will come from. Everything is changing. And it's moving so rapidly and so quickly that people are not even able to keep up with it. You think 2017 is something? Wait till we hit 2018. And I have a word for 2018, but not today. Let's turn to the book of John. John chapter 1. <clears throat> In verse 1. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Amen. Oh, glory. In the beginning was the what? Word. word. The Word. The Word. Think about this. Now, I don't want you to look at the Bible right now as just the Word yet, okay? I want you to look at the Word as a, an arena of communication, which is intelligence from God. In other words, he had a way of setting things up to communicate with every dimension and every place and everything he's ever created all at one time. See, because he's God. He can do that. Our peanut brains have a hard time with that. Why? This divine intelligence is light in life. And the word was with God. And the word was God. God was setting up a way of communication. All things were made. He was, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him. Nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend. In other words, terrestrial and celestial intelligence cannot comprehend divine intelligence. Even artificial intelligence cannot comprehend it. Divine intelligence supersedes everything. And it says in verse 5, or verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, 
and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Can you imagine being the creator and nobody knew you? Wait a minute, I made you. Who are you? Think about that. Who are you? The one that created me and you, people don't even know. Oh, glory. In verse um, 10, it says, He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. So not only, not only they didn't know him, but they didn't even receive him. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God. In other words, he was going to share divine intelligence. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but were born of God. Why? Because God chose you. You didn't choose him. So when you are born of the Spirit, you are totally different. Divine intelligence has now been placed in you. But it's our responsibility to tap into it. It says, For as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believed in his name, who were born not of the blood, of the, uh, nor, not of the blood nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became what? flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the only glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace which means God's plan and truth grace and truth divine intelligence is light and life again terrestrial and false celestial intelligence is darkness and death one is light and life the others are darkness and death and the reason why it's death is because it causes people to be separated from light and life. Divine intelligence prepared a body. He prepared a body for himself. The divine intelligence himself prepared a body for himself. Amen. And he put in it, he, he put in himself, he, he became flesh and, and, and it, he came into the earth. Why? Because he was going to make a way of escape for his people. And he was going to expose the deceptive intelligence with divine truth so that people can come into a new life. That's why he's called the way, the truth, and life. And this was all purposed by the creator of divine intelligence. The word became flesh, divine intelligence. What? <laughs> With divine words, divine language, and dimensional language. I'm going to say that again. He came with divine intelligence, divine words, divine language, dimensional language, universal language of a communication with a divine creator. Think about this. The divine intelligence came from, to bring to me and you future. Does everybody get this? He came to bring me and you future. The word of God speaks of future. Proclaims who you are in him. Blessed with every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. You don't go to mediums or shake one of those little things and look in there and you don't have to read fortune cookies. <laughs> the word of God, the divine intelligence came to bring you the reality of your future so that you can live from the future to the present and no longer from your past if you're able to tap into this. Oh, words from the future. Woohoo! To tell the future and prepare you for the future, which gives you hope. I'm going to say it again. These are words from the future. Amen? <laughs> to, to tell you of the future and prepare you of the future so that you have hope. 
Why? So you can go through things because you're not going to go, you're not going to rely on your circumstances to dictate anything. You're living from the future. And Colossians chapter 1. <laughs> Praise God. You all want to hear the truth, right? This is a Star Trek moment. You kidding me? <laughs> Colossians chapter 1 and verse 1. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are in Colossus, Colossus, whatever. Grace to you and peace from God our Father uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints, because of the hope which is laid up for you where? In heaven of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospels. So the gospel is a message of in divine intelligence. Does everybody get it? Which has come to you as it is also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God and truth. As you also learn from Ephesus, our dear fellow servant, who is faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with what? The knowledge. What knowledge is he talking about? Divine intelligence. That you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all what? Wisdom. What wisdom is he talking about? Divine wisdom. And spiritual understanding. Why? So you and I could get a hold of and communicate with the creator who created everything in his divine intelligence so that he brings us this intelligence for you and I to comprehend so there be a full communion and communication with him in everything so that you and I have the promises of who we are, the promises of future. The promises of prosperity, the promises of love, the promises of victory, the promises to overcome the world, and the promises of a place where you are sent from to return. Oh, praise God. In verse 10, he said, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints and the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, which is celestial and terrestrial intelligence, deception, false news, fake news, and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn all, all over all creation. Again, in Christ, divine intelligence and wisdom and knowledge comes from him for me and you. That's why Jesus came. That's why he's called the Christ. He's not only the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, but he's the eternal divine intelligence. So that you and I could partake of this and have true communion and understand all things, to see all things, to step into another realm at any time. Second Peter chapter one. It's always waiting for us. He's always waiting for us. Second Pete chapter one. Everybody there. Verse 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ. What was he a bondservant to? Divine intelligence. 
to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so he's talking about divine knowledge, isn't he? Now he's going to talk about by knowing, having this divine knowledge, you're going to be able to participate with something else. So you got divine intelligence, which is releasing divine knowledge. You're going to be able to participate and plug into something else called divine power, divine nature, divine character. Look at, and his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of what? Divine nature, no longer human nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither what? Barren nor unfruitful in divine knowledge, amen, and divine intelligence of our Lord and Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even blindness, and is forgotten. He was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be more diligent to make your call an election sure. If you do these things, you will never stumble. Can a divine intelligence stumble? Heck no. No. See, this is why people fall and do all kinds of goofy stuff, because they disconnect from the divine intelligence. And they're no longer getting a download from God. They get a download from fake news. Does everybody understand it? Celestial, terrestrial, fake news. There's only one truth and only one true news, and that comes from the divine creator and those who are walking right with him who speak truth because they have now taken on a divine character with divine intelligence, carrying and being fed by divine knowledge, producing of divine wisdom that they carry with them. And they no longer love their lives because they love their new life. Is everybody okay? We haven't got up, run out yet, so praise God. <laughs> Thinking this guy's a nut. I am. I'm crazy. I'm crazy over Jesus. But I love divine revelation. Woo so Paul was a bound servant of divine intelligence. Amen? Escaping the human nature of deception, sin, and destruction. Let's go to Colossians 1 again. I have a short, simple teaching. <laughs> You'll never see Christmas the same. <laughs> Glory. It's not just about giving presents. The ultimate gift of mankind was divine intelligence given by Jesus. Put in Jesus. <laughs> what a gift. <laughs> what a gift. To walk in an arena where you begin to think like your creator thinks. The greatest joy I'll share again is that a father sees his children see what he sees. What a joy. Verse 19, let's speak it please. For please the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind, do you see this now? Enemies in your mind, why a terrestrial and celestial false fake news? The human nature. 
constantly being fed by all kinds of things around us. Environment, music, movies, games, all kinds of things. Now we see artificial intelligence beginning to take over everything. Because they believe it can't be affected. See, you can remove celestial and terrestrial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a little bit different. It must be destroyed. Oh, we're not getting into that today. Anyways. Oh, hallelujah. Whew. Is everybody okay? Good. <laughs> Where are we at? Verse what? 22? Okay, yeah. Let's go to 21. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. Everyone say, I've been reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed, if, 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 that means you got to cooperate. Everyone say, I got to cooperate. It's called the school of the spirit. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, became a minister. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the what? The church. Of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The ministry, or the mystery, which has been hidden from where? Ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. What is the mystery? Divine intelligence. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of, his, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, the divine intelligence in you. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Jesus Christ. To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Reconcile, reconciliation. But he says something first. He said, before I could do anything, I had to shed the blood. In other words, he had to cleanse the way because divine intelligence doesn't come into things that are not cleansed. So he had to cleanse the way first to release divine intelligence through the wisdom and knowledge through Christ Jesus, who would, put, who would be the example so that the word that was eternally, the communication that was eternally before it could even come into this realm had to come in, so the word himself had to come. And so what happened, and he got people around him, and the Holy Spirit drew people around him, many millions of people around him, to write down his words, to make copies and translate it and scribe it, so that these were testimonies, history taking, a divine intelligence now written, which we call the Bible. And there's many more, many, and much history and confirmation. The Dead Sea Scrolls, when they were found, many um, historians that wrote about Jesus and the words of wisdom that he carried. Things that he said that people couldn't even comprehend. Raising the dead, casting out devils. Speaking in parables to them, which were parallels to heaven because he knew they wouldn't understand. And he kept telling them, it will come. One day I'll send my helper to you, the Holy Spirit. Then you'll be able to comprehend. And he will bring to you the divine intelligence. And whatever I speak, he's going to speak to you about it. Whatever I think, he's going to speak to you about it. So that we can become like-minded. Oh, glorious. Just take me out of here. <laughs> Matthew 1. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. In verse 18. <laughs> Praise God. Christmas will never be the same. 
That's why it's called Christ Miss. Unfortunately, many, many it's Christ Miss. They missed him. So there are those are Christ, Ma Christ Mass or Christ Miss. <laughs> Don't be a Christ Miss. Verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was, was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Found with child of who? The carrier of what? Divine intelligence. Okay. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. He was like, man, well, I don't get it. This, my girlfriend's pregnant and it's not from me. That would have been a hard thing at that time. See, they would have stoned you to death. So he didn't want to, you know, he was like, man, you know, what do I do about this? She cheated on me. I mean, you got to, you know, the, the, the powers of darkness, you don't think they were beating this poor guy up? She cheated on you. She doesn't love you. You know how the devil talks. You should have never started. She was the wrong one from the beginning. You know. <laughs> you know what it is. Run. <laughs> Praise God. In verse 20. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. So who impregnated Mary? The Holy Spirit. The carrier of what? Divine intelligence. Whoa. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will save the people from their sins. Now, I want you to understand something. That sin is a fruit of Celestial and telestial fake news. Lies, deception. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, translated God with us. It's and Joseph, being aroused from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took, to him, took him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn and called his name Jesus. So God is present and his ultimate gift to mankind was his divine intelligence, presence, power, and person called Jesus the Christ. Hebrews 4. Now, this is where we make a good connection. Is everybody there? Hebrew 4. <clears throat> Verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith to those who heard it. They kept rejecting it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he said, so I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place on the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Disobedience. Disobedience. So they chose, listen, you may hear divine intelligence, you may hear the divine words, but you still have a choice to accept it, receive it, Digest it so it works in you. Because when it works in you, then it'll work through you. But see, many people just take it and put it on a the shelf. They really don't take it seriously. 
They don't realize the serious of life and death. They really don't. Because they still play with death. So they don't take this divine intelligence seriously. And God won't either. He won't allow that divine intelligence to lay in a place where it's being mocked. Amen. That's why people get stupid again. Amen. And they do stupid stuff. Does everybody understand that? Oh, glory. It says, since therefore remains that some must enter it, and to those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience, Again, he designates a certain day, saying to David, Today, after such a long time as it has been said, Today, if you will hear his voice and not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not have afterward have to spoken of another day. Therefore remains, therefore, rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. In other words, you are resting on his truth. You are resting on him. For the word of God, come on, speak it with me. Verse 12. For the word of God, now wait a minute, what's the word of God? Is that intelligence? Divine intelligence, right? It's a way of God communicating in a divine nature to his human nature people so that they may become divine nature themselves. And it says here, the, the word of God is what? Living. Living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, and imaginations and desires, and spirit, and of the joints and mirror, which is your body made of, and is a discerner of the what? Thoughts and what? Intents of the heart. Wow. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. To who you and I must give account. The Word of God, divine knowledge and intelligence of the Creator of all things, releases his words through man by his Spirit to become a sword that penetrates, exposes, and replaces all telestial, celestial, and artificial intelligence. But you must first be connected and stay clean. You must have a willing heart and a desire to want to learn. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. A couple more scriptures, we're done. God willing. So what is Christmas? <laughs> Praise God. Christmas. God sent the Christ. Divine intelligence. God shared his mind with humans. <coughs> verse 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance, but not in heart. Anybody know anybody like that? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Everybody knows somebody like that, right? For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. For, or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no, live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we thus know, know him no longer. In other words, we no longer acknowledge Jesus according to the flesh anymore. Why? Because he was the mind of God, the divine 
nature, the divine power, divine presence, divine truth, and divine intelligence that came when it was left for me and you. He paid the price, cleansed away. He's no longer the same. You want to see him now? He's got woolly hair, fiery eyes. I'm kind of snapping. Good. He showed up to you right now, you'd fall apart. You couldn't handle it. What? And you couldn't even talk to him. The only thing you can say is hallelujah, holy, holy. You try to think of a thought, it'd be holy. In his presence, be, you, you can't think of nothing else. It's no longer you. All your emotions, imaginations, everything is gone. Gone. Now you're one with him. Oh, glory. So we no longer know, acknowledge him any longer according to the physical arena because that's not like he is anymore. Even though you see pictures of him in the, in the physical stuff and whatever. Verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of what? Why do you have the ministry of reconciliation? Because you carry divine intelligence. That is that Christ, that God was in Christ. God was in Christ. Right? Reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are what? Ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for the divine intelligence. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Wow. As a new creation in Christ, by allowing divine intelligence of his word, character, and knowledge, and love to possess you. 1 Corinthians 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. In verse 6, 1 Corinthians 2, 6. Everybody Okay. However, we speak what? Wisdom. Wisdom. Not from below, but from above. From the divine intelligence. Yes. In verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. For whose glory? Ours which none of the rulers of this knew, for if they'd known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit, the carrier of divine intelligence. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world. We have not received the Spirit of the world. Associated with the Prince of Power of Error, darkness. But the Spirit who is from God that we might know the things. Everyone say, know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Why? Through what? Divine intelligence. <laughs> These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, by, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, the carnal man, the celestial and telestial fake news man, his thoughts, cannot comprehend the things of the Spirit. They are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually what? Discerned. Watch this. Go to John chapter 8 for a minute. He can't get them. Because they are what? Spiritually discerned. John chapter 8. In verse 42. 
John chapter 8 and verse 42. It says, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Why do you not comprehend my words? Why do you not get my divine intelligence? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the what? The devil. Hmm. Do you understand that the carnal nature is associated with the offspring of the devil? That's why you must be born again of the Spirit. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you do not do or want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. There is no divine truth in him. When he speaks, he speaks a lie, and he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you don't believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Let me tell you, there are a lot of people who say they are believers, but they are of the devil. Does everybody understand that? Because only through that relationship with divine intelligence, where the mind of Christ is establishing in you, can you have relationship and connection. Other than that, we are still carnal then. We are still foolish. We are separated. And one thing you don't want to be separated is from the divine intelligence of God Almighty, which is light and life. And I'm going to close at Ephesians 3. Jesus came to bring divine intelligence to all mankind. A way of communication between God and man who needed to be reconciled, cleansed by the blood, and released of the divine nature of Christ so that the mind of Christ could be established in each and every one, which is called divine intelligence. But if you don't read this, if you don't eat this, there's no way you're going to get it. Amen? Amen? This word is just, it's recorded. It's the divine intelligence that was recorded by multiple people, people who lived it. And get a divine nature or a new way of communication. Then you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and you get a, a gift called tongues, which is multidimensional language right to the Father, which no celestial, terrestrial, or any artificial intelligence can interpret it. What a gift from the Spirit of God. What a gift from the, intel the, the divine intelligence of God Almighty. What a gift from the mind of Christ for me and you to have another language and a tongue that can speak directly to the eternal creator all the days of your life. And while you're speaking to him, he's releasing stuff to you. He's releasing divine intelligence into your spirit, not to your mind. Because the devil knows what your mind thinks. Ephesians 3, verse 8. Glory. Is everybody okay? Are we ready? Let's run it. To me who am less than the le least of all saints, this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which is from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. By who? The by the church. That the divine intelligence would be made known by the church of God to mankind. To the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, to whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of all divine intelligence of the Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to what? 
comprehend with all of the saints what is the width and height and depth of divine intelligence to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever and ever. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. So there's a lot more of Christ coming than what you realize. See, things keep getting watered down. And the Holy Spirit is trying to bring things up now. The reality of who we are. See, it's people so quickly and so easily use, lose their identity of who they are. We are above, not beneath. Does everybody get it? You and I should not be outwitted by any power of darkness. Or be deceived by some foolish terrestrial, celestial, or artificial intelligence when you carry the divine intelligence that created all things. So we can see things through, hear things through, and walk things through. But there is a price to pay. That's called cooperation. That's why Jesus said, come and learn from me. And be careful because you don't want to throw your pearls before a swine. Amen? There are those who will not get it. Don't try to force it. Don't try to convince in that arena. Let God deal with them. Amen? You got to let God deal with them. Praise be to God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Father, for coming in the Christ. Thank you for releasing divine revelations that we maintain a divine intelligence from you. Thank you for allowing the mind of Christ and the Holy Spirit to dwell in us that we may be your temples. For we give ourselves to the Holy Spirit, the divine carrier, a divine intelligence. We give to you our bodies as a living sacrifice. As a body was prepared for Christ, so now let our bodies be used for you. And let us commune in like-mindedness with each other so that eternity would be revealed to mankind in our conduct and our words and in our love. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.